Welcome. Uh, I have the African, Africa, what is it? <laughs> Afric lad. Afric lad. We've just done a podcast together and we thought we'd plug into um, YouTube Live. Now, um, one thing when I watched your videos, um, you said, uh, I reckon we need to make a meme out of you. And, <laughs> and you said, scam, scam, scam. Now you pronounce uh, it. Right, want me to say it again? Yes. <laughs> My people, it says scam, scam, scam. <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> nah, that's brilliant, man. We're going to make a meme out of that. So uh, what we did is we had a podcast. So I asked um, Afrik Lad uh, 12 questions. So if you want to watch the podcast, go off to dehek.com, click on podcast, and you can listen to our conversation. And obviously I'm going to produce the podcast as a video so you can watch the whole thing from A to Z. Uh, it was 35 minutes long, so it won't bore you to death. But we were just having a good conversation about Ponzi schemes and the mentality of people who get involved in them. And I was sort of saying to, can I call you Shows? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, Shows, yeah. that um, I sort of criticise people who get involved and think they're getting rich. And I, I really struggle with the fact that people don't, did they really think they were going to get three times their money? And I, I've been a bit critical. But then yesterday I put on a, a, a video about Mike Lucas and I interviewed yeah. him like we're doing a Zoom now. And I just couldn't, I could understand that he'd been led down the garden path. He'd been totally misled and they'd managed to siphon $25,000 out of his uh, pension yeah. fund. And not only that, the guy that led him down the garden path, he would have received at least 15% of that in reward money for introducing him. And it's basically yeah. daylight robbery. And I felt really Absolutely. sorry for Mike Lucas. So um, how did you feel about that, mate? Well, I saw the video, I was like, gosh, you see, this very old man who is just trying to get on with his life, here comes this young guy or whoever that person is, basically scammed him. I felt so bad for the money. I felt like this is disgusting, really. This is awful. How can you treat somebody like that who is vulnerable? How can you do that to another human being, in fact? Yeah. So for me, I just feel like... This is the reason why we're here and we're talking about these kind of things. I feel like these kind of people need to be exposed, need to be talked about. We need to see their faces and shame them. And obviously, if there is any kind of, I mean, there are laws around MLM, et cetera, but you, you wonder whether there are things that the government can do more in our country. Oh, they're so slow. People. They're very slow. It's, yeah. it's crazy. And especially in Africa, like where I'm from in Nigeria, they're just using the people. I, I watched somebody on live, YouTube recently, two days ago. In fact, today they were on uh, selling all kind of lies. And when I stepped in and made a comment, they blocked me. Yeah, I was just asking questions. I was only asking questions to say, hold on, how does this work? How can you get the money back? And somebody says, oh, this is not a scam. I didn't even use the word scam at that point. <laughs> yeah, I don't even use it. And then they said, it's not a scam. I said, hold on a minute. Do you want to tell me something? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I, but it's, yeah. it's really sad. I do. I think um, I'm looking at, I've been trying to, I've been listening to a lot of the terminology that they're using lately, and I believe that these guys have NLP training, and that's basically when they brainwash you. And just recently, I'm listening to a trend where Keith is actually talking about the platform, and he says, we're very lucky to be able to use the platform. And then I'm thinking, this platform they have is basically like the website, it's the mechanics, it's the money-making machine. Then he's been appointed this global sales representative, which I don't know what the hell that is actually. And I don't know what job role he has and whether he has any clout, as I said in my video yesterday. <laughs> so I'm thinking, wonder if he's going to take ownership of Hypernation. And he's going to make out that, you know, Hyper Fund and Hyperverse, they're basically, because yeah. in his video I'm just cutting up at the moment, he said yeah. that. He's working for Hypernation, and he's not working for Hyperverse. So he's basically saying all the debt that has broken and happened, he's not he's not yeah. able to fix that because he's not working for this. He's appointed the oh Hypernation. And I, oh my god! So, I wouldn't so be surprised if he. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he announces that he's going to take yeah. over Hypernation. So this is what I feel. 
I personally feel he actually uh, is the main person behind that. He's the one who owns that. I don't think he's somebody else. All these things they're talking about, the corporates, they, he kept saying they, he kept saying the corporate. I'm like, who? Yeah. No corporates. And also he mentioned, I watched a video of him saying he's worked many years on this, on this for this company. He's never been paid. He traveled here and there. He doesn't get paid, but he's doing it because he loves to do it. He's yeah. da, da, da. And I'm thinking, dude, who on earth will work for somebody else where, other than yourself that will go work for free every single day? A YouTuber. Why? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess so. <laughs> yeah. I guess so. We I'm actually that. in we're charge imagine. of the promotion of um, Hyperverse and Hyper, Hyper Fund, whatever it is. <laughs> I mean, no, you're right. Imagine. That's right. Imagine. You, yeah. If you have to travel, even if even if riding your bicycle every day to work or driving your car, petrol Cost. or taking public transport, would you do that every day for a year or two if it's not for your own business? Yeah. If it's your business, I can see why you would do that because it's your business you're developing, but if somebody else is. So when he's talking and I'm reading along the lines, and this is the tricky part, a lot of the people they're dealing with don't think like this. They don't think outside it, but they don't read along the lines and think, hold on. They don't use logic around it to say, well, hold on, why? And also when they're saying they don't own the company, they're just only working for the company, but the way they talk, they, they're advocating for the company to me, it's like it's your company. For me, what I'm hearing is like, oh, if if it's not yours, yeah, why is the owner not talking the way you're talking? Why is that other person hiding their face and hands or whatever? Why? What's the problem? No, no one seems to question that. I mean, I mean, really. <laughs> um, something else interesting too, and I reckon this is what's happened between Kalpish and uh, Keith. And I reckon that Kalpish was actually brought up, maybe uh, brought in like some sort of business coach or some business mentor or a mindset coach of some sort. And they've obviously had a relationship in the past, but I reckon mm. Kalpish actually saw the floor and I reckon he did defraud. And I do think he stole all the money from Hypernation, Hyperverse. So, and then I reckon yeah. that's, he's, if Keith's the, the, the lead guy, and then Kalpish has taken all the money. Why don't we know what's happened between Kalpish and um, Keith? Keith? And it would make sense. And, and it's, and it's, I don't know if you, you the video you, you edited recently, you posted recently, you see, you noticed Keith, um, Keith was saying the branches fell off. When the heavy wind came, we caught some branches. I was going like this. Yeah. So I wonder whether that's that's part of what he's referring to that or when it was we had a big issue, some people fell out, da, 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 but it's all good. Yeah. I wonder whether that's he's trying to, you know, bring talk about that to say, hang on a minute, this guy has left. Because clearly there's a there's a there's an issue there. There's something wrong there. That's why yeah, um what Kalpesh left. So definitely that's what he was trying to refer to. And the way he was talking for that whole Zoom meeting, that video, you can clearly see if it's not your business. You yeah. don't talk that kind of. You don't, you're not that passionate. He's not an advocate. Or yes, okay, it's executive That's sales right. director. Yeah, but you're not. It's not really your business. It's not really your company. But you're talking like it's your company and and all these boot leakers or whatever I call them. I call it. Hey, God bless you. Hey, yes, yeah. my brother. Hey. I'm like, come on, people, stop this nonsense. <laughs> the uh, interesting thing I noticed as well is that um, he was telling us stuff like we all knew it, and I'm listening to it going, I've never heard this before. And why you, you know, he's obviously they've had big meetings and a lot of discussion going around. And, you know, probably only three or five percent of people actually know that discussion, but he's addressing the other 95 plus people, telling them like yeah. they know all these stories. Yeah. So, really yeah, weird. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. All of them that I've listened to, you can tell, like you mentioned earlier on, that they, they've all practiced certain type of way to talk. Yeah. Certain words they use, the language, like obviously religion. They all, I, I've seen people quoting scriptures. I'm like, what yeah. is going on? Yeah. They say, hallelujah, quoting scriptures, telling people all kind of things. And they use specific kind of words. Yeah. Obviously, they're talking about- Light gets brighter. Uh, multiple, whatever, streams of income, whatever yeah. you call it, financial stability, wealth, generational wealth, all those kind of things. And they're using community, they're using family, they're using all kinds of things. Yeah. I'm like, what is going on? Yeah. No, you're right. And also they talk about fear. And if you, yeah. I, I used to, I, I do know the Bible quite well, but they talk in the last days how there'll be a whole lot of doom and gloom. And they use, they're talking the same stuff that's going to happen in these last days 
are actually, t- mm-hmm. you know, the the fear of the, the, you know, like there's a video from Mr. H just 24 hours ago, and he's talking about the com- communists, you know. Oh, ra- yeah, the communists, yeah, yeah. And that's what they want to bring in. They want us to go back to Russia and be like communist countries or well, people. And it's crazy. It's interesting because this other friend I was talking to that knows these guys, as in there's army, uh, Susan, you know, I know Susan. Yeah, I, told you, I, yeah, I know. Susan. I've been helping people fill out her if 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 CA uh, complaint form because she's um, broken her. <laughs> Somebody's been trying to prosecute her, and I've been helping them fill out the form. Oh, ooh, Susan. Okay, yeah. I know Susan. Yeah, I know her family. Yep. And so this other lady I was talking to knows Susan as well. When I I've, I've, when I interrogated a little bit, she she told me she knows Susan. She knows Desami and stuff like that. And then she showed me one of her sessions she did, a YouTube um, Zoom session she did. And then she was talking the same way those other guys talk. And I said to her, listen, it's not like you all have been trained by the same person. What's going on? That's right. You yep. were saying the same. She said, no, da, da, da. I said, listen, yep. what you're saying there is the same thing. I heard this other person said over there and that person said over there. Yep. And then this is claiming how they want to make whatever, 1 million millionaires or whatever, 10,000 millionaires in, in 10 years, something like that. They yeah. have this kind of thing. Like, young, long lady, that, uh, yeah. you have to, you've been in this thing for God knows how long. You've not become a millionaire yet. How are you going to make these people become millionaires? Yeah. Apart from that, you know for sure that this is not as easy as what as the way you guys are making it. Yeah. It's not easy to make money. It's mm. not. You're not going to become a millionaire overnight. You're not going to become a rich person in in six months or one year, yeah. unless if you're going to win a lottery yep. or maybe your parents left you some huge money somewhere, I don't see how that works. Mm. Anyway, I kept talking to this lady and then some of the things she, may, she mentioned, um, I'm like, come on, you better stop this. I said, please stop. Especially you're dealing with your own people, black people, Africans. Yeah. How many of these Africans have the technology, have the knowledge, can even read and write properly yep. that you're talking to? I understand this. Yeah, I've I've seen them in their meetings, and they've got people who have got cell phones trying to buy crypto, so they can buy you know manage their crypto wallets on their cell phone because they don't have computers. And <laughs> they're gone. And I'm sitting here they thinking, the oh, and that and they, they press the button, and that's like Mike Lucas's. He was he was he, he, held by the hand to invest, but never held by the hand to take his money out. Exactly. And, and that's exactly uh, what happens. They, mm-hmm. It's easier to put the money in. They show you all kind of secret, all kind of ways to help you every mm-hmm. step of the way to put your money in. Yep. Now, to get the money out, it becomes a problem. They say, oh, go to your upline. Oh, talk to this person. Oh, don't worry. Oh, okay, where is the patient? They're telling you the patient. And the more you ask, they see that, oh, you're negative. They said, oh, we need you to be positive. We need positive mindset. It's an investment. you got to understand it. Anything you're investing, you will lose the money. You should be, you, you, it's possible that you lose money. Hold on a minute. You were not talking like that at the beginning, though. When you're trying to get them in, you were not talking of all these big risks. Yeah. Instead, they were saying, it's the same thing like a real estate. You can lose money in real estate. Da, 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 da. And yes, there is truth that you can lose money in real estate, but you, I don't see why you're comparing that with what you're doing because what you're doing is nothing. You're just faking people. What you're doing is all fake. There's nothing behind. There's nothing they're going to gain. You know that. Well, Pinnacle Nart was make... going on about people's pension funds and how the, <laughs> how the, uh, the government's running a Ponzi scheme of paying people their pension funds. But I'm going, well, they're still getting the money, mate. They're still getting paid their pension. So it hasn't stopped yet. And I'm sure that the government, if they do do that, will, the whole world, all the the blockchain will stop running and the world's going to be that much doom and gloom. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the same thing. This other lady was arguing me saying, she was saying, because we're talking about the bank, the fiat money and crypto, whatever they're doing. Well, the banks, they're using your money to do business. If mm. you sometimes want your money in the bank, if you want to take like 10,000, 20,000, you need to go through all these questions and answers for them to give you your money. I don't want that. I want this freedom. I can get this and that. Yeah, and I said, but hold on a minute. People have been waiting to retrieve, withdraw their one next, their own money they put in this hyperverse thing since April. <laughs> they haven't got it back. Yeah, who is going to chase them? I say, at least you can go to the bank and argue that it's my money. Yeah, purchase your money. They give it to you. If I put ten thousand, hmm. I left it there for one year. Even if the bank used that money to do business. Yep. When I come back a year later, 
my ten thousand will be there, even if it doesn't give me interest. Let's say yep. the, the bank did not. Mate, give no you've listened to my you've listened to my YouTube channel. I've used that exact scenario. <laughs> And then the other bit I added into it was I, I, I do drop shipping, right? So I sell $3,000 worth of products. I make $1,000. I go put it in the bank. And now I have $11,000 in the bank. So $11,000, I had 10. I've had a 10% increase in savings. And that's how it it's works. Crazy. Yeah. The people are talking about real estate. They're arguing this stuff. And I said to them, okay, I have properties right now. They pay me rent for those. Yep. For the last five, six years... I have rent coming in yep. and my property haven't depreciated to the point where I'm going to lose it. You know what I mean? It's still there. It's still growing yep. in interest and I get rent paid, like rent paid every time. And that when I'm using that to reinvest into something yes. else, into another building. You don't get an IOU? Way. You don't get a piece of paper with an IOU on it telling you that you're, you've got so many HU in the bank and you'll be fine. <laughs> and you go to the bank and you go, can I use my IOU? <laughs> and they go, this isn't worth the paper Absolutely it's printed not. on. Absolutely no. no. Oh. What I've got is buildings with proper agreements made. Me and my tenants, we sign the agreement. Yep. You take the paper, I take my bit. When the year round, you pay my money or whatever, or however we've agreed, if it's monthly, you pay my money monthly. That's it. You carry on living there. I do my business straightforward. You don't have to go recommend anybody else <laughs> for you to get yeah. anything. I think I think the timing for all this is quite interesting. I had a big rant on my last video because Keith was actually giving me an insult about my suit that I was wearing, and that he was giving me a hard time in a LinkedIn chat because I rent a house, and then he he's talked about me quite a few times. I don't know why, but they seem to <laughs> criticise people that aren't wealthy. And I think, oh. you know, when you get wealth, it's, I think everyone would like to have unlimited, no money worries. And a, they're selling yeah. a passive income. I, I kind of get people want that, but that's not what they're offering to deliver, not what they're delivering. But I mean, you don't have to be wealthy. I mean, I've traveled poor country. I've been to 35 countries. I went to um, India and you'd go meet a, tuk -tuk, or a taxi driver and you'd take you back to his family and you'd have dinner with the family, and the first thing that they hand you when you walk in is normally their kid. And they go, this is my son. And the family mm. qualities that people have yep. that don't have the money is something exactly. that these rich, wealthy people who think money is the, the true to happiness, yeah, it, you know, they miss the boat. I mean, would you really think you're better off sitting on a pile of money knowing that you've scammed your friends and your family out of their money to get your wealth? Absolutely not. Listen, even for me anyway, even apart from scam, let's say I, I made scam. lots of money. Scam. 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 scam yeah. One more, one more. <laughs> scam. Yeah, that's it. Now we're talking. Listen, apart from scamming people, what I'm trying to say is, even when I make that big money, I mean, right now I made, I don't make that big money, but what I'm making yep. is enough to support me and my family. And from that, I support other people because I don't feel comfortable having that. Yeah, And I know people who are struggling, genuinely struggling, and I'm just going to go there and show up, especially when I go back home in Sierra Leone. In England, not so much because here, most, most people got more money than me. Yep. And relatively, people live... You, you, I mean, there are people on the street still begging or whatever, but what I'm saying is the basics, we have the basics here in the UK compared yep. to when I go home. When I go home in Sierra Leone, in Africa, there is far less, and mm -hmm. you meet far more people struggling there. You're not going to get a, so, a Lamborghini? You're not taking a Lamborghini <laughs> home and, and a gold necklace? And no way. I and don't what, do that. You so you're going to call yourself AKA, what's your handle? AKA African lad, crypto African king. African lad. African lad. AKA African lad in the building. Yeah. Your boy, your boy in the building. <laughs> uh, I've got to get my hat. I've got, oh, yes, I've got, to get it. I've got there my hat. Go. That's dope. Oh, there you go. I'll do the no neck thing. AKA Africa Lad and AKA yeah, I'm Danny De I'm um, Mr. Dot Com now. There was a Dot Com. <laughs> road. Sorry, mate. Yeah, still got man. it. I still got it. So for me, I don't feel comfortable going home, hanging out with friends or family or just people, mm. and I'm the one who's dressed up and showing up. And then obviously, Saturday, not criticize them because they are poor. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or trying to, it doesn't make no sense. What's the point? What are you going to gain? You mm. already have more anyway. 
why do you not have to laugh at people? Why do you want to take the meek out of people because they are poor? It don't make no sense, really. If you really genuinely think you have money anyway, you should help people yeah. instead of laughing at them. Help them because that's what it's about, isn't it? And also, also that's what they're preaching, that they are helping people. Yeah, they help themselves. If you're really helping, if it's true, you're truly... Anyway, it's rubbish. We all know it's rubbish. So yeah, don't, don't, no, they're not, they're not <laughs> nice people. <laughs> I think if I was rich, though, I, I, I can't say the word, but hopefully you'll help figure it out. If I was rich, I'd like to be a pathetic. What do they call those? Um, do you know the word I mean? Pathent a person that's so rich that he gives his money away where he sets up. It's oh, um, pathetic. I know what you mean. Yeah, um, oh, I know the word you're talking about. It just got off my head now. But if you're rich and you give all your money. Yeah, uh, but you do good with your money. I mean, that's I why I, I was there, yeah. crying out to Keith Williams because I know he might say he hasn't been paid by the company, but he, he misses the point that he's received shitloads of money. And he's, he, there's no doubt in my mind he's a multimillionaire. And he's, I've even heard of people that have gone around with cash to his house and he's set them up accounts for them. And then he doesn't know what to do with the cash. That's what I heard from people. And I, I know that because I had one lady telling me that one guy met her at a park bench and she gave him $1,500 US and then wow. he couldn't set up something. He come back and got two more hundred dollars US out of her and I've forgotten what the totals was. But anyway, she was got, she was going to the police and trying to stop this guy. She didn't even have his phone number or anything. You know. Oh, oh sorry, sorry. The word just came to my head. Sorry to yeah. put you there. Go, go, go. Philanthropist. Is that what we're looking Woo! for? A philanthropist. <laughs> <laughs> Let's write it down. <laughs> well, see, I can't even pronounce it, so I can't say it back. But yeah, that's where I'd want to be. Um, but you think, you know, so with people like that Mike Lucas guy, you know, surely if you had that much money and let's say you've got, let's just say Keith's got 5 million, which I'm, I'm pretty sure he's got more than that. You know, got more than that yeah, of yeah, peeling off $25,000 back and giving it back to yeah. somebody, that would show yeah, a, a true character of a person, even if he is a dirty, rotten scammer. Yeah, I was checking when I was, I heard Keith was talking about how many people they have? They, he said they have close to a million people. One point five, I heard. It changes all the time. There you go. So even if let's say one million people signed up, each of those people paid something like what three hundred to buy to buy. I'm on the calculator, mate. Up. I've got the calculator yeah, here. There you go. I like that. All right. <laughs> so so three hundred dollars. Now, how many zeros is a million? It's six, isn't it? Or seven? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Zeros, yeah, six One, million, two, right? three, four, five, six equals. So I think that's three billion. Okay, so three. What is that? I, I got yeah. One, on. two, three. One, two, three, four. So yeah, so it should be about yeah about that. Because I worked out so it was that, a four billion dollar scam. About one point five. Uh, well, it's four and a half billion because Kalpesh Patel actually said to Keith Williams. Um, yeah. Well, he actually said in a chat, where has the $4 billion gone? Who's got that? So that was something. I've actually been chatting. He replied to me after all this time, Kalpesh Patel replied to me. And that was when I sent him a message basically saying, how stupid is Keith Williams putting a, uh, a, um, a target on his forehead, telling everyone that he's the global sales representative for hypernation, the biggest scam in the world. And what was he thinking? He wrote back and he said, um, basically he was saying that he, he's lying to people and I'm going, aren't you <laughs> lying as well? But they're all the same. And it's like, but he didn't push we, we dot global down my throat uh, or the other one yeah. we're promoting. Yeah. Yeah. I saw that. So yeah, I mean, just to go back to the numbers, if they had sold this thing, the, Pa the package or to sign up for three hundred dollars per person. If yep. you multiply that by one fifty, one million five hundred, that's about four hundred and fifty million. Wow, easily. And you, and you and I know people obviously invested more. Yes. So imagine just to buy in to say, okay, this is me signing up. This is my three hundred dollars. That yep. makes them four hundred and fifty million easily. So yeah. originally there was five VIP fives, and Keith Williams and Brenda Chanda, Bitcoin Rodney. And I think Clayton Ford, all those guys were there way at the very start. So technically speaking, all the money that we just talked about, they would get a percentage of that in rewards. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that if it's $4 billion, that's frigging <laughs> shitloads of cornies. <laughs> Imagine that. And then people, 
obviously buy all these things. They said you have to add more money to get to this next stage. Put this and people put 10 grand, 30K, whatever that is, yeah. 50K, 100K. Imagine how many millions of people have been. No wonder well, they're all over the place. Well, Dubai, mo they're most people put more than the 300 and eight, like uh, just using Mike Lucas, 25 grand. And honestly, uh, I, I was speaking to a VIP five and he actually helps me. He feeds me the videos. So he's still involved. And they right. blocked New Zealand from getting access to the hyper community. Anyway, I'm still getting the videos because I've got people on the inside who hate this crowd, people which I love. Inside, because other people are not happy with them anyway. And some people, I think also, some people are stuck in this system. They're thinking, okay, I can't get out now. I'm stuck in this. Either because they all, they're also hoping they're going to make money or yep. they think if I leave now, this guy's going to come after me. That kind of funny, funny stuff is all happening. Maybe that's why some people are not even leaving because this guy that I know, this lady whom I told you, her money is stuck in hyperverse. She's yep. friends with them. She works with them. She's she's recruiting people. She recruited people into Hyperverse. She putting people into PLCU, all this Novotech, and then places. But now because her money is stuck, and some of uh, <laughs> these other people on Manifa, their money is uh, stocked as well. She got cross. She sent me she sent me screens of her complaining, challenging them, and go cross with them to say why are they bringing up Hyper Nation yeah. when they haven't sorted out people in Hyperverse yet. So she wasn't happy with that. So she was complaining, blah, blah, blah. I said to her, well, maybe this is time for you so, to actually dissociate yourself from these guys and call them out. Yeah, You've been part of that. You know them well. It's your opportunity to at least change and make a difference. So I think she's still thinking about it. I said, you need to stop. I, wow. Because I know her well. I said, I know her very well. I got her telephone number. I contacted I told, I spoke to her over the phone yeah. for two, three days. We're talking. They're just day too far invested, aren't they? Yeah, they are too much too far into it. And then, of course, to get out now, it becomes tricky. You know, and I said to her, all the people that are underneath you that you call your team, maybe you should give them proper advice now for to tell them the truth that this thing is rubbish. You know what it's she's not doing? No. She's not talking about the elephant in the room. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's address the elephant in the room. <laughs> yeah, I reckon. Uh, I think I don't know. I'm trying to look at the psychology of it. I'm trying to think if you would, if you were, if you had all the power, like what would you do to stop this? Like what would you do to stop hibernation? I mean, obviously get Keith Williams out of it. Yeah, well, all every what I put in, first of all, we'll pass a law because don't forget that these kind of things, you probably got more control in your country where you're in charge. Whatever is happening yeah. elsewhere, you may not be able to control that. That's but right. In my country, I will pass strict laws to say any form of that, that kind of, uh, that name or whatever that is that you're doing, any form around it is illegal completely. Yep. Take like, the internet off them. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then actively go after these people. If somebody complained about them, go after them, make it quicker, make it a quicker process. Do yeah. you understand? Make it a quicker process and make it slow because people get fed up. People might think if I complain to the government or to whoever the agencies are, it's going to take maybe forever for them to get to these people anyway. And the money's so gone. Feel like, and I have to go through and fill all these forms and stuff. I don't want to go through that. You, don't, you want to make like an emergency thing. People ring that specific number dedicated to where you can call. Yeah. And you have some secret police or wherever that turned up to say, yes, give me their details. Next time they are, next minute, if you know the address, we're going to be at their address. So why don't they have... do that? Because that would be, that's so, to me, I'm thinking that's so simple. I mean, it's either illegal or legal to promote a Ponzi scheme. Yeah, but, and if you yeah, but if you look at Hyperverse and you look at these yeah. people in these Zoom meetings, how can they deny that they're not involved in a Ponzi scheme? Exactly. But you see now, I was reading here in the UK, the laws are on this MLM, etc. Now, they clearly stated that if you're doing MLM or pyramid scheme, especially pyramid, that's how they put it, pyramid scheme is illegal. However, if you're doing MLM, if the MLM involves selling a product, that's a product actually they're yeah. selling, it's, it's illegal. That's what they're trying to say. MY. But if it is, so the, basically that thing gives you the gray area, isn't it? To say, well, the MLM, if you're selling something, it's fine. But if you're not selling anything, then it is. So what these guys would do, they will pretend as if there's something they're selling, isn't it? Yeah. They will say, look, we have a product that we're selling. We're selling this, we're selling that. So yeah. they get around it in that form, in that yeah. way. So that's, that's, what, right. that's what I mean by it. You have to make it clear. That listen, if you're doing MLM, it's illegal. Forget it. If you're doing because they know, according to what I was reading, they know that 
Mm. Most people in MLM going to lose. Yeah. They know they've said most people will lose and they know that it comes down to you recruiting somebody else yeah. in order for you to make the money. So if you know that if you're an authority, just put just say full stop. Boom. And also the other mm. thing I think I could do, they a tank? They, will, they should do like a sorry. big a big tank. <laughs> they should Why the map? like yeah. You know what they did for the, the gambling and cigarettes? That if I'm for the gambling here in the UK, I don't know for New Zealand, in the UK, they have forced these guys to actually put out statements, advertisements on TV and everywhere to say gambling is not for everyone. Mm. Like they force them because a lot of people are losing money to go through gambling and is causing all kind of mental issues, etc. Right. Because there were no restrictions or whatever. So TV advert promoting that Ponzi schemes are dangerous. Like cybercrime, yeah, that's what I mean. yeah, awareness. Because yeah. that's that's what I believe that mean? we're doing. Like I think that's the mission is, you know, uh, the internet's great. I mean, I get every now and again I get people complaining about my videos, trying to get them offline, and I'm thinking, you know, there's so much red tape, you know, as if these guys are going to prosecute. Keith Williams going to send me a legal letter to tell me that um, I've defamed his his good name. I'm looking forward to that letter because that's the first thing I'll get it printed and framed. <laughs> but I mean, you know, it's just disgusting that they, um, they get away with it. But um, then often YouTube does remove some of my content and you think, why can't you look at this and see yeah. that these guys are crook and leave it out there? Cause that's what I'm trying to do is name and shame these people, make people yeah. aware. That's, that's because of all this gray area that is around it. You know what I mean? And mm. like, that's why, I, that's why I said as a government, they need to step in and put this as a proper advert. Force all the like now we have BBC for here, for example, here. Yeah. They should put it on BBC because that one the government don't have to pay for that. They would yep. because they, if you put it on the other private TV, they might say we is tax or whatever we're paying. But we already pay BBC anyway. We pay TV license. Yeah. So why not put out BBC every day or every four or five times a day? They'll pull it up. To yeah. Say, this I think it's a great idea. I do think awareness is everything. I mean, I feel for people like Mike Lucas. He's a prime, prime example of the people they're targeting. And I, I remember being a Jehovah's Witness, right? And I used to knock on people's doors, and you'd knock on their door and they'd say they're not interested. And you'd go, "Well, is it Jehovah's Witnesses you're not interested in, or is it religion?" And they would go, "Oh, religion." And then you'd go, "I understand that because religion's responsible for a lot of the mayhem in the world at the moment. Wouldn't you agree?" And before. Before they knew it, they were having a conversation with you. And then you'd say, I'd yeah, like bro. to share a scripture with you. And you'd go off and, but then I think some people would just slam the door and tell us to F off. But uh, yeah. we would walk to the next house and the next house mm -hmm. until you found someone that would listen to your message. And that's what these mm -hmm. guys have discovered, that the the people that 60 years above, the people that yep. are, are trying to build their, their pensions, they're going after yeah. these guys, the people that don't understand crypto, but listen to the advice of a friend. Yeah. You know, and they yeah. just, and they're just, they'll, they, they know the demographics. They're not going to these crypto geniuses. Who, no, you know, to go there. Listen, that's how I was saying to somebody, I say, okay, if there's a promise in 3X, 4X, I wonder why those big rich guys are not doing that. They're not going for to 3X their money. Because yeah. surely, surely, Elon Musk would like to 3X his money. Or Richard Branson, or yeah. all the other Spanish people, Bill Gates, they surely would like to 3x their money. I know they got a lot of money, but yeah. they're still working for money. So why are they not 3x in their money? Do you watch Shark in Tank? Uh, Shark Tank? Yeah. yeah. Can you imagine exactly. there was a guy that went on there trying to promote a Ponzi scheme and it was a, <laughs> a reward card? They just shot him down. And I can imagine yeah. Keith Williams going to Shark yeah. Tank and pinching yeah. Hyper Nation. <laughs> yeah. what or, or letting go. Over here we call it. Over here we call it. Um, Dragons, Dragons Den. Den. I watch all of them. Let him go to the Dragons Den. Yep. And go tell them you can three x your money and see what they will say. This is what I don't understand. That's why sometimes I'm thinking yeah. people who live here in particular in the UK who are exposed. Why are they not researching? Why are they not asking these questions? Yeah. What's going on? Again, it comes down to desperation. When people are desperate, they are poor. Yeah. Sometimes they see one thing, they're like, "Oh yes," and they jump in it. And that's what they're doing in Africa. They go to Africa and right now. They're because that guy Des is half Ghanaian. He's yeah. Ghanaian. Well, he actually Ghanaian. he went to Ghana, he didn't he? Ghana. Yeah, and he grew up here. So he goes to Ghana. He did a world tour. Him. He went to world oh, tour, yeah. but he only went to nine countries. <laughs> <laughs> that's the world and he doesn't know how big the world is. 
<laughs> oh my god yeah. so yeah it goes to ghana south africa nigeria ah. and the and recruiting people there and these people i saw some people talking to some guys in ghana and nigeria i was like what and as we know i mm. have been to church as well i used to be in church yeah if i used to sing in church and i know how people you can never go near if you like do you want to do we sing along oh yeah we can I, sing I, I, I can i can get some music going. Mm. are you ready to sing <laughs> Well, we're singing Ponzi. Ponzi, <laughs> Ponzi, Ponzi. 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 Give me your money. We'll give you an IOU. Ponzi. Beware of Ponzi schemes. All right, yeah, mate. All scam. 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 Oh, we definitely got to make a scam. meme out of that, mate. That's brilliant. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I think um, I think the timing for these Ponzi schemes is quite good, though, because theoretically everyone's been on Zoom for, for too long because of COVID. Um, people yeah. mentally are exhausted. Um, people are tired. I mean, I've had a real big change in my business, um, you know, and I've had to sort of start over again. And I'm, you know, and it's depressing, you know. And then somebody offers you an opportunity to escape it all. Boom, and you're in, and you're thinking, yeah. So I just think That's that, it. you know, and there's there's some quotes in the Bible that says, um, the rich will get richer and the poor will get poorer. And I think the truth <laughs> of the matter is they're stealing from the poor and giving to the rich. And um, it's just, I just can't I stand it. Because Listen, I'm... I know somebody. Eh? Go on, sorry, go on. I, I was just going to say, because of my, like I, um, I've lost two people in my family um, to suicide, you see. And they wow. were, wow. because wow. they're so, thank you, they were so wound up in the religion and it played a big impact in their life that they felt like they couldn't live up to the expectations and so they, they finished their life. But I think there's a lot of people out there, because I believe that these Ponzi schemes, you're playing with people's money. And I reckon the the effects of it all could actually push people over the edge. So it's more Absolutely. than just fooling people out of their money. It's affecting people's mental health. And yes, I think there... Listen, I, I think it was one of your videos as well. There was a lady who mentioned how... <clears throat> excuse me. There was a lady who mentioned how she invested, I think, 100K. Yep. And... She was. She said she loaned the money. She loaned it from a bank, so she's paying the loan. Oh, and with terrible. Interest. So she was asking these people, Susan, Susan. I think it was Susan's training she was doing, and this. She was asking them to say, "How can I get just my money back? Just the money, the hundred k that I put. I want that money back." She says she's having mental issues. I was like, "That's exactly what's going to happen. What's happening to loads of people who put money in?" Yeah. They, it's mentally draining and it's going to cause all kind of mental issues. Yeah, I know something who I used to live with who puts money into this crypto situation. Not not this hyperverse. I think. Well, I don't know if she was if she was in the hyperverse thing. Something hyper. I know she put money into it. Sorry. Something hyper. Yeah, she, There's a lot of hype going on. Hyper. I think she became hyper after when she put the money in. <laughs> hyper sick. So she put money in. <laughs> hyper sick. That's the one. What hyper stressed. <laughs> <laughs> we could do a hyper podcast. <laughs> I think that's the word is hyper stressed because what happened is every day this this uh, lady will look at the phone morning, evening, night, looking at the phone. As soon as you wake up in the morning on the phone to check whether money's gone up, whether it's gone this, whether it's gone that. Yeah. And I keep <clears> saying, <throat> what's going on? Mm. Well, and then she's always in this meetings talking to one guy called Dwayne, talking to this other guy. They're telling her, they're telling him this, putting money. That's when I found out about the PLCU, putting money in PLCU, the farm here, farm there, and they constantly checking, checking, checking all day, every day. And you can see that this yeah. person is, she is not, she can't, she's not rest. She, what's the word? She's full rest. She's on rest. <clears throat> she can't relax. She's not relaxed because constantly on the phone. Yeah, high blood pressure. See, yeah, checking to see whether the, the money's gone up or it's gone down. Who, then, and that's just constant. I was like, wow, you don't need, you don't want to be in this kind of situation. It's so stressful. That's yeah. mentally drained. That doesn't affect your mental stability. Yeah. Why does life have to be so complicated? Yeah. I don't have to wake wake up early when I check, whoa, is my house value going down? Yeah. Or is my farm thingy going down? I don't have to. I don't, I don't put myself under that stress. It, it doesn't even occur to me to stress like that because yeah. it's there. I'm not desperate about you going up tomorrow morning or going down. But with mm. this thing, because the way they've sold it to them to say, oh, in three months you make this money, or oh, it will go up. And so what happened now? They're constantly on watching, looking and scared. And yeah. this person has put lots of money, money they have saved to do something else. They put all the money because the sister convinced them to put it because the sister won some money 
Yeah. The YouTube body they use that to advertise. See how they use it. And they, because the sister withdraw tiny money and say, look, I paid for this. I got some money from it. That convinced this person to put in through mm. a friend who works with these guys up there. And and then she put in big money. Yeah. Nothing is put nah. back according I, to uh, I, I, I used to do quite well for myself. Well, I had built up a business, built a house in the country, and three years in living in the house, then totally finished the house, and then my wife said she wanted a divorce. And I, I knew her, we weren't that great, but I didn't think we were a divorce material. And, um, and <laughs> so then I went off to the doctor, and I said, look, you know, wife wants a divorce. My whole body is aching. And, um, and he goes, I'll go home and sleep it off. You know, at three o'clock in the afternoon, I had to call, a, well, I asked my wife to call an ambulance because I was in that much pain and she refused to anyway, long story short, I had a burst appendix and I could have died, but then I lost my house. I lost my marriage. I lost basically everything I built the last whatever uh, years building up. And I did keep my business, but my business, my ex-wife was trying to kill the business because she thought I was worth $2 million. So I went and wow. I got my, my business valued at $37,000 and said, I'll give you $20,000 if you let me keep the business. But I, I spent two weeks in hospital, right? And I was every half hour I was fighting for my life, literally. And long story wow. short, I survived. But the thing is, my house in the country, I lost. My, uh, my wife, I lost, obviously. And I started off with nothing. And then I think when you have a health scare, you actually get your priorities right. Because it's number one. I mean, and friends and family are most important. Now, I could, I'm, I'm not... I'm pretty smart. If I wanted to, I could get into a Ponzi scheme and I could probably make enough money to make it worth my time. But yeah. uh, you believe in Dubai right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, but you know, why? Why? I mean, like you said, the stress of getting that money and then you can lose it all in a heartbeat. You could, you know, these guys can have all this money and then all of a sudden they could have a, a stroke. I don't know. A good friend of mine's had a stroke. He's a lovely guy. And now he's. You know, we go see him, we give him videos, support, and, um, you know, but his life's changed dramatically. Now, does he care? He never has, but does he care about how much money he's got in the bank? Does he care about his big flash house, his big flash car? He, he's trying to stay alive and he's trying he's to get healthy alive, again. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what's important. Staying alive. Listen, I learned a good lesson of, about that recently as well. My cousin died recently, a few yep. weeks ago. Sorry. Of cancer. So this is a guy, good looking, huge, tall, fine, carrying on his business. He also has properties back home and he's got property here as well. Yep. He's doing well. And next minute, boom, he was diagnosed with cancer. Within the space of well, two or three months, he he was he became smaller than me. He was wow. thin. When I went to the hospital, see him i couldn't believe it was him laying there couldn't move couldn't speak nothing his body's gone down because they took him so he, when they diagnosed him he was already stage four so yep. he was like gone really and mm -hmm. they took him to the hospice i went to see him uh, i couldn't believe it then i just sat there thinking wow human beings man this guy right now he doesn't even care about none of those things that he has yeah none of that all he wants right now is to get out of this bed go with his children and his wife and live happily he just told me a lesson to say hey Keep doing good. Keep, obviously, enjoy your life, but do good because at the end of the day, all this stuff that you're fighting to get or wherever, yeah. what really matters is this moment, your health, your family, and what you've done in terms of legacy, how you people yep. remember you. Too right. That's what you want. You don't want to be, I mean, some people don't care to be, but I personally don't want to be on earth or even when I'm gone, people started saying, oh, he duped me with some money he owes me money he scammed me on this thing he scammed me on that all this yep. thing that you've built is based on scam yeah how is your children going to feel when they see all of yeah. that how are your children he's the biggest scammer in the world <laughs> my my <laughs> papa are going to see all of that people are coming after my my dad yeah. for this they're not going to be proud and they probably thinking people are going to come after us as well He's just yeah. crazy. Oh, no, it's very anyway. sad. Hey, um, I'm gonna um have breakfast, so I'm gonna um I'm gonna stop the live streaming. So people that have been watching us, um, we are gonna I've recorded a podcast with the Afric lad. Is that right? And yes, he's gonna say brother. three. You so you remember? Yeah, I know. I've got it written here, <laughs> and I can as long as I can pronounce it. I, the way I remembered it is a freak, 
a freak lad. A freak lad. A freak lad. This is not a freak lad. This is a freak lad. A freak lad. Oh, yeah. It's close enough, I'm mate. not a freak. I am not a freak Oh, lad. come on, mate. You've got a meme out. You've got a meme. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to keep an eye on your YouTube channel. I will um, make this a video. It will be on my website, and I will have a link to the A freak lad's uh, YouTube channel. Please do subscribe to his YouTube channel. Do a search. Find him. And then um, we can get the word out about Hyperverse. Now, that being YouTubers, I always say to people, make sure you hit the thumbs up. When you hit the thumbs up, it actually tells YouTube you like our videos. And then they distribute our videos throughout YouTube. And that's how we get these videos seen. Now, when you've got a thousand subscribers, you can monetize your channel. Then what that happens is because YouTube like you because they make money out of you. So then people like me who have monetized, my videos go out further because they know they can make money from them. But when you're a new YouTuber, you need people to subscribe to your channel so you can monetize. Once he gets 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 views, then his videos that are on his channel will be distributed. So like the channel, we really appreciate it. And also, if you hit subscribe and hit the bell up, because I'm a techno genius, um, if you hit the bell, every time I publish a video, you'll get a notification telling you that there's a new video out. And that's, yeah. we appreciate it. Now, um, before we stop broadcasting, I want you to say those three words again. Now, anyone that's thinking about investing in Hyperverse or Hypernation, what would you tell them? No, no, sorry. Before we do that, sorry, let's let's do that. You just that those okay. questions you just asked. Let's ask them again. But before that, I just want to say one last thing. Well, the last few words for anyone watching these videos, people out there. There is no easy way to become a millionaire. There is no easy way to make money. So please don't get yourself caught up with people who come and tell you you make you become a millionaire in six months or a year or two years time. It is certainly, I can assure you 100% that it is not that easy. So please do not do that. Think carefully before you get into any kind of business like that. Somebody's going to promise you anything. I was, In fact, I would suggest if somebody promises you that kind of thing, just say no. <laughs> it's too good to be true. Right, now let's go. Now, now ask the questions. All right. <laughs> now the questions is, um, I've got to do this, um, this thing here. Do you know what I'll do that for, mate? The clicker, yeah, because it puts a spike in the sound file. And when what well, we are streaming live on YouTube at the moment, and people will be getting annoyed with watching it because I'm out of sync, so my ah, lips see, are I delayed see. by about two seconds. So, but when yeah. I release the video, uh, I will be able to line up the audio with the lips, but I can't. You, I've sat there for hours trying to look at me opening my mouth, and just as I make a noise, line up the audio, but with a clicker, <laughs> it puts a spike. And I can go, whoop, that's it. Yeah, you just align it. Yeah, no, it's brilliant. All right, so I want you to say those three words again, scam. Yeah, but ask the question. Oh, oh you, now, you if somebody, the question, no, I, I've people. got this, I've got this opportunity of a lifetime and I think it would be really good for you and your family. And it's an investment opportunity and I don't want you to miss out. It's called hypernation. Have, have you heard of it before? My people, it's a scam, scam, scam. <laughs> Good stuff. All righty, let me click the right button. Whoops, here we go. See you guys. Thanks for tuning. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and do a hunt for the African lad. African 